Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 27 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to look at two topics. We're going to look at translations and we're going to look at reflections. So in this video we're going to look at how to translate shapes on grids. We're going to look at how to reflect shapes on grids and we're also going to look at how to describe both of those. So how to describe a translation, how to describe a reflection. So I hope you find this video useful, so let's get started. So let's look at our first transformation, which is translations. So whenever we translate a shape, we just move it or slide it across the grid. So for instance, we could move it so many squares to the right and so many squares up, or we could move it to the left and down and so on. Now, whenever we're describing translations, we usually use a translation vector, which looks something like this, where we've got one number above another number, and then we've got our brackets. And here, if we've got five, one, that means to translate it five squares to the right and one square up. So the number on the top tells us how far to move it right or left. If it's positive, you move it to the right. If it's a negative, you move it to the left. And the number beneath tells you how far up or down to move it. So if it's positive, you move it up. If it's a negative, you move it down. If any of them are zero, you don't move it that way. So for instance, if you had four zero that would mean translate it four squares to the right and then that's it if for instance you had zero negative two that means don't move it left or right but move it two squares down and so on okay so let's have a look at our first question now normally what i would do in these videos is to get you to pause it and try the question yourself but because you haven't got the grid drawn for you what i'm going to do is occasionally i'm just going to get you to think about how you would translate it and then what i'll do is recommend that you print the practice questions off at the end and try those so here we've got a shape and it's called c and we've been asked to translate c by the vector negative one four so i want you to think how that's going to translate this shape and what you would do to move it so have a think now how you would translate that shape okay so because it's negative one four we're going to translate it by moving it one square to the left and four squares up because that's negative it's to the left so it's one to the left and four that's just going to then be four up so we're going to translate this by moving it one square left and four squares up so what i like to do is i like to do one point at a time so i'm going to start off with this point and i'm going to move it one square left and then four up one two three four so it's going to move to there now i'm going to do this one so i'm going to translate it one square to the left and four up one two three four this one one to the left and four up one two three four this one down here one to the left and four up one two three four let's move this one one to the left and four up one two three four i've actually missed this one one to the left and four up one two three four and so you can see that shape forming and then if we do this one one to the left and four up one two three four and then it would be there and now we would just join them up with a ruler and pencil so it looks something like this and that's it we've translated c by the vector negative one four so we've moved it one square to the left and four up and it would look something like that obviously use a ruler and a pencil whenever you're doing these questions okay so that's how you translate shapes by using these vectors okay now let's have a look at describing a translation so here we've got a question and we've got shape a and shape b on a grid and we've been asked to describe fully the single transformation that maps a onto b so we're going to describe this and it says single transformation well we know it's a translation because i've told you that we're going to be describing a translation so i want you to think about how you would translate this shape this triangle a to get it to be on b so think about it in terms of words first of all and then write that vector down so have a pause now and try that okay so to get from a to b the first thing we're going to say it's been translated so a translation so it's a translation by now let's write the vector so to get from a to b we would move one square to the right and then one two three four five six down so because one to the right that's gonna be positive so one and then because it's six down it then be negative six one negative six so it's a translation by one negative six that means one square to the right and six squares down and that's it and that's it so if you want more practice on translations i recommend you go to the description below and there's a link there to translations and you can practice the practice questions or do the practice questions on translations okay so we've looked at translations now let's look at our next transformation which is a reflection okay so the second transformation we're going to look at is a reflection now with reflections typically you're asked to either reflect a shape in the x-axis or the y-axis or an equation of a line such as x equals and an x equals line is a vertical line or a y equals line which is a horizontal line or sometimes you're asked to reflect shapes in the line y equals x or y equals negative x so let's have a look at some of those now so here we've got the shape c and it's a triangle and we've been asked to reflect it in the line x equals negative one so let's draw this mirror line to begin with x equals negative one so x equals negative one they're all the coordinates that have got an x coordinate of negative one so it'd be for instance negative one four or negative one zero and so on and if you plot all those points it'll look something like this it'll be the line going straight down like so that's that's our mirror line 
x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1. So that's the mirror line, and we've been asked to reflect c in that mirror line. So to do that, I'm going to focus on the three corners of the triangle. So I'm going to start off with this point, and to get to the mirror line, I would go 1, 2 squares to get to the mirror line. So I'm going to go in over 2, 1, 2. So that'll bring me to there. Now this point here, to get to the mirror line, I would go 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to go in over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then finally, at the top of the triangle, we would go 1, 2, 3, 4 to get to the mirror line. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's it. And that's it. It would look something like that. So we reflected the triangle C in the mirror line, x equals negative 1, and it's moved to here. So that's it. So that's where it's moved to. Sometimes you ask to label it D and so on. So then you would just label it. And that's it. Okay, so that's our first reflection. So we've reflected it in the line x equals negative 1. Now let's have a look at our next one. So this time we've been asked to reflect the triangle C in the line y equals 1. So I want you to think about how you would reflect this triangle in the line y equals 1. Have a pause now and have a think of it. And then whenever you're ready, press play. This line here, this would be the mirror line, y equals 1. So y equals 1. It's that horizontal line with all the points that have got a height of 1. Now we're going to reflect this triangle in that line. So let's focus on the three corners. So let's do this point to begin with. So it's 1 above the mirror line. So we're going to go down 1. So it's going to move to here. This point here to get the mirror line, it's 1 down. So we go another 1 there. And then this point, it's 1, 2, 3 to the mirror line. So we go 3, 1, 2, 3, and it moves to there. So we've got our three points. Now we just need to join them up. And that's it. So we reflected C in the line y equals 1. And that's it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look whenever we've got a question where it's y equals negative x or y equals x. So make sure you know what the lines y equals x and y equals negative x look like. So y equals x. They're all the coordinates where the x coordinate and the y coordinate are equal to each other. So for instance, it would be 0, 0. Or it would be 1, 1. Or it would be 2, 2. It's a line that's got a gradient of 1 just goes through the origin. So the line that would go up this way, right up through the origin, like so, would be the line y equals x. And it's very important to know that's the line y equals x, particularly whenever you're doing reflections. Now, in this question, we've been asked to use the mirror line y equals negative x, so y equals negative x. And what that's saying is that whatever the y coordinate is, the x coordinate is the negative value of that. So for instance, it could be something like 4, negative 4, or 1, negative 1, or even negative 2, 2 and so on. And if you plot these points, you'll see it's just a diagonal line going down this way through the origin like so. So it looks something like that. That's the line y equals negative x. So in other words, it's a straight line that passes through the origin that has a gradient of negative 1. And whenever we look at the equations of linear graphs, we'll talk more about those sort of equations as well. So that's the line y equals negative x. So we need to reflect this rectangle b in that line. Now I'm just as you're going to draw a slightly better mirror line. So that's our mirror line y equals negative x. And now let's reflect b in that mirror line. So let's see each of the corners. So let's start off with this one. So it's one diagonal to the mirror line. So we're going to go in over diagonal to there. This point up here, it's one, two diagonals to the mirror line. So we're going to go two diagonals, one, two. So it's going to move to there. This point up here, it's one, two and a half diagonals. So we're going to go a half, one and a half, two and a half to there. And then this point here, it's one and a half diagonals to the mirror line. So we're going to go a half and one and a half to there. And as you can see, we've now got that uh, rectangle like so. And that's it. And whenever I'm doing reflections, whenever I'm using the lines y equals x or y equals negative x, what I like to do is I like to actually to rotate my page and actually just turn it so that the mirror line is vertical like so. And actually see, oh yeah, that actually has got a line of symmetry. For some reason, I always think of butterflies whenever doing questions like that. But yeah, so that's it. So that's the reflection of uh, that rectangle rectangle in the line y equals negative x. And that's it. Okay, so we've carried out some reflections. Now let's have a look at describing a reflection. So here's our grid, and we've got two quadrilaterals, and A is a trapezium, and so that means B is a trapezium as well. I'm avoiding the plural trapezium there. <laughs> okay, and we've been asked to describe fully the single transformation that maps A onto B. So we want to see what transformation maps A onto B, and as you know, it's going to be a reflection, so I've kind of given that away. But I want you to pause the video now and think how you would describe the reflection, or that transformation that maps A onto B. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to say that it's a reflection to begin with. So it has been reflected with mirror line. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down the, well, where the mirror line would be. So in terms of the mirror line here, the mirror line would be a horizontal line, and it would go in the middle of the two ships. So it would go across there. So that line, it's a horizontal line that passes through 1.5. So all those points have got a height of 1.5. So for instance, 1, 1.5, 2, 1.5, 4, 1.5. So this line has got an equation y equals 1.5. So it's been reflected, A has been reflected in the mirror line, y equals 1.5, y equals 1.5. And that's it. So that's the single transformation that maps A onto B. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at translations, so how to move shapes on grids, and we've looked at those translation vectors. And if you've got the code Maths revision card, 
Codemaster Revision card number 83 would be useful for that. And also we've looked at reflections, how to reflect shapes on grids, whether it's the x-axis and the y-axis, or whether it's an x equals line or a y equals line, or even though lines y equals x and y equals negative x, it's important to be able to do those reflections and how to describe them. So I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Remember, tomorrow it's going to be 26 days to go to your GCSE maths exam, so 3 o'clock tomorrow on YouTube. That's the next video. So I hope you find that useful too. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.